right, the long-awaited video that everybody's been waiting for and I've been dreading, audio post-processing. This is where you want me to tell you how to take your crappy audio recording, push your magic button, and it all sounds great, right? I tell you my settings, you put them in, and it sounds amazing. Yeah. That would be a wonderful thing if that could happen. You know, I've got a lot of people on my health channel constantly asking me, what do I take for this health condition and what do I take for that health condition? I say, well, what are you doing that's causing the problem? Maybe you should stop doing that and the problem will go away. And they go, oh, no, 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 no. They don't want to stop their bad habits. They don't want to stop their comfort foods and their addictions. They just want to take some magic stuff to make their problem go away, which doesn't work. The same thing with audio and video. I keep saying this right from the beginning. I said, and I noticed from the lack of views with some some of the videos like how to properly set the audio recording environment and people weren't that interested in that the, you know right from the beginning people were always asking me what microphone to use just tell me what mic you use as if they're going to use the same microphone i have and they're going to sound amazing and then when they heard what the microphone actually sounded like they go oh Okay, it's the post-processing. That's what it is. Definitely the post-processing. That's it. That's the magic thing. And I go, no, it's everything. It's, it's setting the proper recording environment. It's where you place your microphone. It's all of it. If you have lots of background noise, if, if you're recording, if your mic is in place right, and so put on motion, no matter, no audio post-processing in the world is going to make it sound great. You have to lay the foundation. Same thing with my, my pictures. When I take good pictures, it's not because I do a lot of Photoshopping on them. It's because I spend a lot of time beforehand setting up the lighting right. It's all lighting. It's all good lighting, you know, and then I, I know my white balance. I know my f-stops and shutter speeds and all that stuff. So when I take the picture, it's pretty much done. I don't do a lot of post-processing. Same with my audio. Yeah, I do post-processing to beef it up a little bit, but it's already clean. It's already a nice clean signal. It's already recorded properly. That is 80% of, of, of it right there. And what, what most people want is to, to take their crappy recordings and to push a button and it all sounds magically wonderful. It's sorry, it's, they got it backwards. 80% of what you do is already done beforehand, not after the fact. So I gotta say that. I, I, I know you want a magic thing, but it doesn't work that way. The other thing is, all right, audio files. Oh my God, most of them are gonna disagree. They live in an unrealistic world where all their speakers are big fancy speakers. They got really fancy headphones. They got all this really acoustically clear stuff, but most people are not in that world. It's almost like you could have the most expensive sports car in the world, would like these guys have the most expensive equipment in the world. But if you put it in mud, it's not gonna go anywhere. Well, most of the audio listening devices that people use is the equivalent of mud. It doesn't sound that great when you listen to the stuff. So you need something super bright and piercy and punchy to get through that to make it sound, trick their ears into making it sound like it sounds great. And that's by, you know, what I do with a little more compression and stuff, which sounds horrible on these people's systems that have really big, expensive, clear sounding speakers and headphones. So of course, it's not going to sound good on their systems. But my stuff is geared towards people who are basically stuck in mud, who have muddy sounding laptops and cell phones and speakers and headphones. So that's what I gear my stuff towards. So you can always tell who the audiophiles are, the ones who say your stuff doesn't sound that good. They're the ones with the big expensive speakers. So you can't make everybody happy. A good starting point for beginners is presets. Almost any editing program you have, even the cheap free ones, they have some basic presets. Most of them have limiters, compressors, and stuff like that, something to clean up the background noise, or just to EQ it or whatever. There's free programs like Peak, for example, that are audio programs that's very common. And most editing programs like Premiere and Final Cut and whatever it is you're editing in, most of those have a good choice of audio filters and things. And then there's the plugins and the apps that you can add to it. And and there isn't one company that has that you, that's great at everything. For example, I use RX7 for most things, but I don't like their DSer. So I go to Accusonis, the Era 6 DSer Pro is much better. So I use for different purposes, I use different apps and programs. There isn't one that does everything great. So I'm sorry, again, there isn't just a push button, do it all things. And then there's these things that these apps have where you push a button and automatically tries to figure out what should be done to the audio to clean it up. It's okay and you might like it, but 
it never sounds as good as if you actually know what you're doing and you go in and do it yourself. Oh, and by the way, today's audio isn't gonna sound that great ironically because I gotta be near all these computers to show you this stuff. This is what it actually sounds like in here with all the computers going. Got like 12 fans going. This one's got the bearing going out on it. And when I tune all that out, my voice starts sounding a little bit weird. So sorry, today of all videos, right? I'm just, anyway. All right, so let's go through the workflow here. The first step is to clean up the track. And that means take out the background noise, take out the hum or the cars or the airplanes or whatever it is that, you know, it's distracting from, from your voice. You want to just isolate your voice. There's lots of ways of doing that. The one that I like to use is called RX-7 by Isotope. They have multiple versions of it. The one that I like to use is Dialog Isolate. And it comes with some presets and stuff which you can mess with. That's the first thing I like to do is isolate the voice from the background. So you get rid of much of the background as possible. Always record clean background noise where you're not talking and you're just recording the background noise. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, if there's cars, computer hum, like right now, whatever it is, get you know a minute of just background noise because there's gonna be times where you need to put that back in. Sometimes you have to take out moments where people are taking a breath or there's a uh or you know or just some weird stuff that you have to take out completely well you need to put something in that spot so it's not dead so you need background sound for that so always record extra background sound okay then after you clean up the background then the step two is i suggest a limiter okay so here we have an audio recording you can see here it has some peaks and it has these valleys. I guess if there's one thing you should make sure always, no matter what for your audio, especially for YouTube, is I always make sure nothing ever goes over minus three dB. That means no peaks, nothing. Over minus three dB, it's just empty space. It's just flat, empty space. Because if you have anything over that, YouTube might crunch it down and make it start sounding a little bit weird. So that's the first thing I do. So as you can see on this recording here, most of my audio is at or below minus three dB. So what I do to get rid of these stray peaks and have everything be minus three 3 dB is you get what's called a limiter. This is what a limiter looks like. I have it at true peak, maximum amplitude is minus 3 dB, the input boost is zero, and I don't touch these two. So when you push this, watch what happens. Now nothing is over minus 3 dB. Now this should sound kind of the same as it did before, but you're not going to hear much difference at this point. But by changing the settings on the limiter, watch what you can do. All right, what you're hearing right now is the limiter just bringing down the random peaks down to minus 3. There's zero input boost, and you really shouldn't hear much difference between this and the original track. Now, what you're hearing now is also minus three on a limiter, but we switched from true peak to peak. We're still at minus three for the maximum amplitude, but the input boost was raised from zero to six dB. So you can get a nice powerful sound just from using a limiter alone. Now there's also situations where you want to take echo and reverb out of the voice. Sometimes it's good to do it before you add limiting and compressing. Sometimes to do it afterwards because you don't even hear the reverb until after you add compression and it becomes more obvious. So each editing session is completely different. It's like it's a different chain of events. So there is no set way that I do things. But the one thing that I do make sure no matter what is I always make sure that nothing I do ends up being over minus three dB. And some people say minus six, minus 12 or all that. But for me, I find minus three dB is the magic sweet spot. All right, so now we get into compression. This is the magic thing that audiophiles don't want you to know about because they want to be the only ones that sound good. I use a multiband compressor, but you can use a single compressor and get a similar effect. A good place to start with compressors is presets. They all come with presets of some kind. Start going through them. They all have different sounds. Mess with them, play with them. You can change the settings. So just play around until you get something that you liked where it gets close to what you like. And that's what it comes down to. Create stuff that sounds good to you, stuff that you like. Forget about the audiophile nobody can make them happy anyway just do what sounds good to you and play around and you might get different versions of what you like you might like a setting over here that you like and then you have a different version you like over here so what I like to do is I like to take all those different versions of compression and limiting and whatever it is all the different sound effects but it's the same track but different versions of it I like to bring them all into the timeline and start mixing them together so here I just stack them on top of each other in the timeline just different sounding versions of each one so like this one I might like more than this one so this one I might make like minus 4 dB and this one down here I might not like as much so I might make this one like minus 16 dB and this one down here I might not I just want a little tiny bit of it in there so I'll put like minus 24 dB and then when you add all these up 
When you push play, make sure that nothing ever goes over minus 3 dB. So it's the same track, but I made it so one sounds like this, one sounds like this, one sounds like that, you know, like they all have different sounds and I just mix a little bit of each one together and I create a multiple personality. That's why I can't give you my settings because I can't say, here's my compression settings, use these and you'll sound great because I have five different versions of them being mixed together in each video, each time I do this, it's different. I'm always playing with the settings and stuff and that's what you should do. Start with presets, change the settings to where you like it, create multiple versions, pick the one you like or mix several of them together like I do um, and be creative. I mean, be an artist, create your own unique custom sound. Yeah, there's so many presets on these things that there is no thing, no thing that you should just stick to. And then maybe you do, maybe you'll find something you like, but I like to just constantly be mixing different sounds together and uh, being creative. That's why not? I mean, it's art, right? That's, that's what I do. And then after everything is dialed in and it sounds perfect to you and you put it out there in the world, it's still going to be completely altered by what that person is listening to. Everybody out there is listening on different devices and those things make it sound different, completely different. Even we hear like, like the headphones. These headphones make things sound pretty good across the board. These Sony headphones, professional headphones, they make everything sound too bright. And I don't like though, it's just too tinny and too bright and too essy. And and, uh, and that's what I know a lot of people are doing when they're saying, oh, it sounds too horrible. It's, it's, it hurts my ears. It's too bright. They're probably listening to bright headphones or bright speakers. Whereas if you listen with these headphones or more dulled down speakers, it'll sound perfect. So again, Everybody out there is listening on different things and you cannot control that. You cannot possibly tune your stuff to sound good for everybody. So keep that in mind. It might, it'll sound perfect on your system, but it might sound horrible on somebody else's. And even if everybody was listening on the same device, there's the matter of personal taste. Some people like a ridiculous amount of bass while other people like lots of trouble. What one person likes, another one hates. So you cannot make everybody happy. It's gonna sound different even not just with the speakers, but physically in somebody's mind and head, it's going to sound different. So you cannot control and make everybody happy. So I know you were hoping I was going to give you some actual settings that you could just dial in and you make it sound just like me and all that. It doesn't work that way. I don't have actual settings that I use over and over for myself. I don't. Every project is different. Every one, I dial it in. It's, it takes time. It takes hours, sometimes days to make the audio sound the way it does. There isn't just a push a button and it sounds a certain way. I put in the same settings and it sounds a certain way. I'm sorry. I know that's what you wanted to hear, but you got to spend some time. You got to learn how to do this stuff. Like anything, if you want to be good at something, you got to spend time to learn it. You can't just copy someone else's stuff and, and instantly sound like them or look like them or get stuff like them. It requires some actual learning. Take some time. Learn the basics. Start from somewhere. Start with the presets. You know, I mean, but you don't even need a lot of post-processing and this is what I keep telling people. You don't need a lot of post-processing if you record it right in the first place. If your microphone is close to your mouth, if you have a nice clean recording, if, you, if you, you're in a recording environment, doesn't have a lot of background sound and noise. That's the most important part. Then you don't need to do a lot of post-processing. Just add basic limiter to it or you know some little bit of compression or something, but you don't need a lot. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to having a good recording in the first place. Just like with pictures. You don't need to Photoshop the hell out of them if you take a good picture in the first place. And that's my point. Stop relying on technology to save your ass and start doing it right in the first place. It doesn't require fancy equipment. You don't need an expensive camera to take great pictures. You don't need the most expensive audio equipment to take great audio. If your microphone is close to your mouth and the, odd, the, 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 the environment around you is nice and quiet and you have you know sound deadening stuff around you you know you learn the basics like I said that's why I took a lot of time to make this video series go back and watch the video about how to create a proper recording environment go back and learn how to properly place a microphone learn the basics that is the most important part it's not post-processing I know that's what you want and I know it's gonna irritate people but I'm sorry that's the way it is in the real world is do it right in the first place and then you don't, you know, these people, for example, who, 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 uh, 
they, 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 they're horrible looking because they ate bad food, they got a horrible lifestyle and they're all shriveled up and nasty looking and they think plastic surgery and makeup is gonna make them look good. They're just gonna look like unhealthy people with plastic surgery and makeup. They're not gonna look like they wanna look. Same thing with audio. If you've got something horrible, in to, to, you're not gonna make it look perfect or sound perfect. That's just the way it is. All right, enough lecturing. I, I, um, I don't know. I mean, some of you probably are not very happy with, with what I just said because you just wanted to put in some magic thing and it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. But the next video is going to be a wrap up of the audio series. I'm going to run down a whole bunch of stuff, uh, miscellaneous things that you need to know about good audio. Don't miss that one. Um, audio is really important, but again, you need clean audio from the beginning, from the very get go. That's it. So learn the basics, do it right and then you won't regret it later on. I hope this helped. I'll see you next week. Until then, bye. Yeah, okay.